expectation that if we follow him, all will be well. Again, almost too hard to believe. All of these expectations, for one reason or another, when, when at least when I think about them, I think about that trip to Kroger. And I think about, yet again, having my hopes dashed. And there's a big part of me, and there's a big part of a lot of followers of Jesus who don't want to take the risk to deal with great expectations because, frankly, in the past, they've been burned. I'm one of them. All right? I'm, I'll just tell you right here and now, I'm one of them. And when I look at these promises that come to us from God, I wonder, Lord, how do I get around this? How do I get past my past and allow you to speak so that I can actually lay hold of the promises and understand the expectations that you're raising so that my life and the hope that you give me can be what you want them to be instead of what I'm afraid they'll be? Well, the answer comes, I think, when we look at the first couple of verses in the, the lesson from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Look with me, if you would, at, at verse uh, 21, the very first verse in, uh, in that lesson from the, the book of, or from the letter to the Romans. Paul says, So I find this law is at work. When I want to do what is good, let's stop right there. When I want to do what is good, let's rephrase that for just a minute. When I want to believe the expectations and the promises that God is giving me, that I can be restored, that I can be free from condemnation, that I can indeed live a satisfying life following in the humility of Jesus. When I want to do what is good, when I want to with my whole heart believe what God is telling me, okay? What is evil seems to be the only choice I have. My past creeps in. I remember all of those times when, when it seems like the Lord has let me down. I remember all those times when my family and my friends and my neighbors and my co-workers seemed to have let me down. I remember all those times when I felt like I was so alone and I'm not sure that I want to trust what God is saying to me. That's the evil that seems to be the only choice. And then verse 22. My inner being delights in the law of God. My, my head and my heart understand that what God is telling me is trustworthy. It can be relied upon. I know that I know that I know that God is not going to lie to me. But I see a different law at work in my body, a law that fights against the law of which my mind approves. My feelings and my emotions based on my past disappointments are getting in the way. There's a war inside me between my head and my heart on the one hand and my feelings and emotions on the other when I'm trying to say yes to what God is promising me. I try with all my heart, I try with all my mind to say, Lord, I really want to believe on this. I really want to act on it. I really want to claim it. But my past keeps creeping up. And I can't get past those feelings, those lingering remembrances. What do I do? What do I do? 
because it makes me a prisoner to the law of sin, which is at work in my body. I become paralyzed. When there's this battle of God's promise on the one hand and my doubts on the other, there's this battle that takes place, and in the midst of that battle, I'm paralyzed. I can't move forward. And oftentimes it seems like the only direction there is is moving backwards in my relationship with the Lord. I'm sure some of us have experienced this. And that's not a fun place to be. Why? Because if you look over at uh, verse 5 from chapter 8, near the top of the page on page 7, those who live as their human nature tells them to have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. Listen to this now. Those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. C.S. Lewis said that the summer that he finally learned to believe in God was the same summer that he learned how to die. Into, into water. And he said the most difficult thing about it wasn't the mechanics of doing it. It was the mechanics of simply letting go and falling. Knowing that in the spiritual realm Jesus was going to catch him. And in the physical realm the water was going to break his fall and he wasn't going to get hurt. Unless and until we are able to say to Jesus that we trust him enough to fall into his arms, we are never going to be free from condemnation. We're never going to be free to live the kind of life that Jesus is promising for us. We're never going to be free to be restored in his love. And in fact, it's not even really us that we're holding captive. When we allow our doubts and our fears, our feelings and our emotions to control who we are in Christ, we're doing more than holding ourselves captive. We're holding him captive. And mark my words, almost always, when we hold him captive, we're holding our family, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbors, those we love most captive as well. Because the bitterness and the hurt and the anger and the fear washes over not only into our relationship with Jesus, but also into our relationship with our loved ones. And so the choice for us is to do exactly what Jesus has said that we need to do. And that is to allow him to put his yoke upon us. Not the yoke of warfare, not the yoke of condemnation, not the yoke of pride and selfishness, but the yoke of humility the yoke that takes away those heavy burdens, the yoke that frees us, that liberates us, that makes us want to dance and sing in the presence of the Lord. That's what he wants for us this morning. That's how he wants us to live. That's how he wants us to rejoice. That's how he wants us to share the good news. May it be so for each of us this morning and in the days and years to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have set us free and that those whom you have set free are free indeed. Help us to fall into your arms this morning. 
Help us to realize where the doubts are coming from and help us to embrace the glorious expectations that you have raised for us. Expectations of fulfilled promises in Christ Jesus. Give us the gift of your Holy Spirit that, that we would be able to see and understand when the condemnation comes, when the warfare comes, when the pride and the arrogance come, that we might turn, that we might fall right into your arms and be held by your loving embrace and be reminded that we are free. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we affirm our faith this morning. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we know that your promise for your church is that it should experience and share your love. Yet we often doubt that you can work in and through us to fulfill that promise. Strengthen us to do your will. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Lord Jesus, we know that your promise for this nation is the flowering of righteousness and justice. Yet we often doubt that your presence in our elections and decision-making will change anything. Strengthen us to speak your truth. Lord, we believe. 